Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I'm going to be painting a forest scene. This actually took me probably about two hours, which is why it is at a super fast speed. But I had a lot of requests to do a forest scene, so I did want to show how I created this without having it be a two hour long video. So to begin, I've just wet the entire paper and I'm just using a mix of burnt umber and a little Van Dyke brown and I'm just sort of creating the bottom ground of the forest. With that totally dry, I've actually penciled in where I want the trees to go just to make it a lot easier. And I'm just going to fill those trees in with burnt umber and then the ones in the back are going to be a mix of Van Dyke brown and a little bit of black because I wanted these ones to have more of a gray shade to them. So the further back the trees go, the more gray and muted they're going to look. I have a light source coming in from the top right corner. So the shadows of the trees are going to be on the left hand side of the tree trunks. And one of the main things that I did want to portray in this piece was the light kind of coming through the trees. So you'll kind of see as I go along how I make that more visible without adding actual white paint to the piece. So the area that I really want that sunlight to come through, I've kept it really light with the paint and I've made sure to kind of dry brush off some of the paint whenever it kind of gets into that area that I want the sunlight to hit. And I'm also going to make sure that I keep the trees that are going to be in the sunlight a lot lighter as well. So I'm just filling in the ground surface right now using a bit of raw umber and burnt umber, just different shades of brown. It really doesn't matter what colors you use. I wanna keep the ground a little more rough because naturally the ground is gonna be more rough than smooth. So I wanted to, again, portray that just using different shades of brown, darker tones, lighter tones, and so forth. And I do use a dry brush every so often just to pick up some of the edges of some of the color that I'm putting down because I do want that to be softer along the edges so it's not super harsh. Hopefully that makes sense. As for the top of the piece, the background is going to be sort of a mix of olive green. I have used olive green here mixed with a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm just gonna really roughly paint in these white sections just to create the look of trees in the background. But once again, I am going to want to keep the areas light where I want the sunlight shining through. So one tip that I have if you want to create light shining through trees is to make some diagonal lines in a darker shade because the lightness of the sunlight that's going to be shining through the trees is going to contrast against those darker strokes of light. Basically the darker lines are going to make the lighter areas appear more bright and more vivid and like they're actually there. So for the trees here I'm just layering the different shades of brown and trying to create a little bit of texture to the trunks. The ones in the back, I of course want them to be a little bit darker as well. Now I want to give an indication of trees filling the background of the scene. So I'm taking lamp black and I've diluted it a little bit but it's still pretty strong and I'm just creating some indications of some tree branches back there and some trunks and I'm also using the same color to define some of the trees in the front a little bit better and just to create some of that texture. You can see on the trunks that I want the sunlight to hit, I am skipping certain areas so where the light is going to shine, I want to skip those areas almost completely with the paint so you kind of get those darker diagonal line looking strokes throughout the tree trunks. And then using the tip of my brush here, I just started creating a couple little branches so that I know where some of the thinner branches are going to go. I wanted to create the background a lot darker than it was, so I'm going to be going in a couple times and just darkening those areas and getting them how I want them to look. 
And I'm also using a dry brush on the edge of these darker diagonal lines just to blend them out into that white, those white uh, sun rays. So you can see here, it's starting to come together with the dark diagonal lines or the dark sun rays and the opposite super light sun rays. It's kind of getting that effect that the sunlight is kind of coming through. And of course, leaving the ground a lot lighter than the two sides where the sunlight isn't hitting is going to help as well. So I'm just taking lint black again and I'm adding a couple more little tree trunks in the background and then darkening some of the areas up front here just to add a little bit more texture and really get that earthy feel. And once again, when I do these trunks, I'm skipping that white area and I'm just making those areas of the tree trunks really, really light. As my painting starts to dry a little bit, I am able to go back in with some darker shades as well because as you guys know, watercolor dries a lot lighter than it looks when you first put it on the paper. So you definitely wanna go back in with a couple more layers if you want something darker. So I'm just gonna continue working on that background here. And again, adding some darker areas and avoiding those light areas where the sun rays hit. I've also used sort of a little stippling method on some of the greenery in the background, and I will continue doing that as I get further along in the piece as well, just to kind of add that textured leafy detail. And also I decided to use a little bit of yellow here just to kind of warm it up a little bit and give that warm sunlit glow to the ground and also on some of the greenery. With the ground dry, I'm also continuing that stipply effect on the ground as well. Again, just for a little bit more texture because I thought it was a little bit too smooth. I'm using my brush here. It's a pretty dry brush and it just has a little bit of paint on it. And I'm just kind of stippling in the greenery on the trees as well. And now I'm going back in with lamp black and a little bit of a darker brown shade. And I'm just filling in some of those areas that I still thought were a little bit too light. And I also wanted to darken the bases of the tree trunks as well to kind of make it look like they're emerging from the ground. So yeah, it's a little bit darker now around each of those tree trunks. And once again, with my darker shades here, just putting that on, blending it out. And then I'm going in with a detail brush and I'm just going to create all of the little branches in the background coming off of the trees. I'm just using lamp black for this as well. And as always, of course, avoiding those sunlit areas. You can see it now, it really looks like the sun is coming through the trees and I love the effect. I'm just gonna throw a branch in here. I actually am following a reference photo that I found on Pexels. Um, I will include a link below if I can find this piece. Again, I always save these to my camera roll and I forget the links that they came from, but it is on the free stock photo website, Pexels. So with that fine detail brush, again, I'm just going in and adding a little bit more detail to some of the tree trunks, basically just little uh, vertical lines, sort of wispy and kind of all over the place. It gives a great tree trunk texture. And just continuing to finish the piece, I'm using that detail brush to go along and just add little dots of dirt. Again, a couple more yellow spots just to add little glistens of sunlight. Now that I am happy with how that looked, I am ready to take the tape off. So let's reveal this nice border. And I decided to go in with some highlights. So I'm just using a gel pen 
And that's pretty much all there is to the piece. I hope that you guys liked this demonstration. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out my Patreon page where I offer completely exclusive videos and a whole bunch of downloadable content that you can't get anywhere else. I hope to see you guys in the next video.